when you started Kogi, there was a guy that st opened one called Asian Pussy, right? <laughs> what? Kogi. There's um, a guy that copied him, but he spelt it wrong, and it said Asian <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> That would fucking sell. <laughs> that I would sign up for. By the way, I've never had, 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 had it. I've heard good things. Hey, something's burning. Something's burning. Something's burning. <laughs> How about taking a shit at 7-Eleven in Tokyo? Those are the fucking most amazing 7-Elevens on earth. What? They look like they're as clean as a hospital. Yeah. And they're like, they Best all have a total washlet. So you go into a 7-Eleven and you like, thankfully, Take a shit there. Like, it's the best experience. <laughs> oh, oh. I would actually say go to Tokyo just to take just a shit to take a at 7-Eleven. Really? Yeah, it's incredible. Guys, brand new episode of Something's Burning. I'm here with my two friends, Roy Choi, Tom yep, Segura. That's right. We go way back. We go way back. I would say probably what? I mean, it's got to be not, yeah, like right? 15 years? It was the first... 50, uh, more than... You and I, more than that, because we yep. moved next door to you in 2007. So what is that? That's more than 15 years now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, 16 uh, years. 16. <laughs> yeah. And Tom and I were broke comics. You were yeah. working at Rock Sugar. Yep. And then I got fired, and then I was a broke cook, and you were a broke comic. Yeah. I remember, you, I remember on Thanksgiving you came over, and you told me, thinking about opening, like, a taco truck, but, like, fusing, like, Korean and barbecue. Yeah. And I was like, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard of in my life. I was just thinking, you were the first person to ever hear about Kogi. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> the way the universe works, like the, the, the food truck that changed the, the industry, and you were the first one with the information. He also thought you, you were at, the, he thought you were at the height of your success. Oh yeah, I thought too. you were at the, you were dude like you were stand up comic. Yeah. Like when we were living in those apartments, yeah. I thought that was the high. I, I didn't think you would go any higher. I thought that was, <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was your mountain top. <laughs> You're killing it, dude. I thought you were killing You're it, bro. Killing I was it. like, oh. you mean you can rent a place where you get a break on the rent? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I knew she was the yeah. one that was bringing over the check. Yeah, the landlord. landlord. But she yeah. was my boss. Yeah. She was both our bosses. She was the landlord. Wow. And I was just like, man, this guy's going out doing shows. He's like. Can't get any bigger. And then uh -huh. you got that Discovery show. I was like, wow. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man. Oh, because then, because it, like, it, it was over. Because Bourdain was on the same network. Yeah, and that was it. Your boys with Bourdain. I'm boys with him, and that was like, that was like, whoa. Because I hadn't had TV by that time yet. I wasn't yeah. on TV. I was like, wow, burnt. What was the first television you did? Uh, it was like just interviews and stuff. Because you know, Kobe, like yeah, news yeah, yeah. programs. The first show I did, uh, shit. Was it, it Bourdain? Yeah. Might have been Bourdain, like the first major, major yeah. show, being a guest on, on his uh, Parts Unknown. That's, sure. that's awesome. Yeah. What was he like? It's just like you saw him. Just like you saw him. Really, really smart, really witty, cared. He was a cook at heart, so always on time. Always on time. Always right there with you. Had your back no matter what. Yeah. You know? Um, and he was, because he, he was so smart. And I, it's sometimes like with you guys as comics, like, we get we normal people get intimidated because we think that we have to keep up with you or like maybe you guys are gonna like crush us or whatever in what way. But with, he was so smart in that same way. You guys are quick like with your minds and your humor, but he never made you feel like you had to keep up with him. Like he would like he was he was a homie. He meets you where you're at. He meets you where you're at. Yeah. You know, and he was happy to do that. You know. So I'm I, bummed I never met him. Me too. I actually did yeah. meet him. Sorry, I did meet him here. I met him in Vegas. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. He was sitting at a table. Right behind me, and I got to say, like, hello, what's up? But that's kind of it, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. I was there. I was meeting him when Joe met him. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that was, you that, were with that Joe was, eating? Yeah, we, okay. we, that was how they actually met. Did Joe have a show at that time, or was it? Joe had a, had a, yeah, had a podcast, but I mean, you know, it wasn't like. Podcast yeah. just. <laughs> it wasn't like Fucking what it podcast is. podcast for you guys. It's podcast comics. Crazy. It, it, it was, was like also, Twitter for me. Dude, change your whole. I talked to Bobby Lee about it. I remember, yeah, I remember. He was like, man, I'd be fucking broke without a podcast. You yeah, know? Dude. I, I remember yeah. when you started doing Twitter, yeah. I wasn't even using Twitter yet. No. You were, you were, no. uh, nobody you were, was. You were, what were you, Big Poppy? I'm Poppy Chulo. Poppy Chulo, I'm yeah. Poppy Chulo. You, yeah. you, you got Poppy Chulo? I'm Poppy Twitter? Chulo. Damn, Damn, dude. Dude, his, they would put, you would put Kogi on, I, I, just in case someone, people in, maybe not in LA don't know totally what Kogi is. Can mm -hmm. you just explain it for a second? To someone that's listening or watching? Yeah, Kogi is the Korean barbecue taco truck that started with Twitter back in 2008. And now, at the time, it's 2008, 
there are not taco trucks. Well, the iPhone just came out. Well, there are taco trucks yeah. in the neighborhoods, They're but no Korean one was using ones. social social media. And no one was fusing like cultures together. So it was uh, it was neighborhood taco trucks and construction taco trucks. So, but at that time, everything was run by like what I say, our elders and our parents and our aunts. And so, just like a liquor store, they were just going in every day, running the business, taking care of their kids. But then we came in as the kids. I say we're the kids. We came in as the kids and added technology to it. It changed everything. You, but you this is 2008. It. There was no iPhone just came out. Twitter just came out. You know, we were coming off MySpace. Like yeah. the world was different. And, and you would post. You would post. I will be on the post. corner of mm -hmm. dot and dot. Yeah. And then hit it, and then you go to that corner, and it would fucking flood. It would flood. I remember flash when... Flash mobs. They were doing I, planking at that time, remember? It was yeah. the year, it was the era of planking and flash mobs. So, like, parking lots would just be... We would, like, it would be, like, Night of the Living Dead. We'd roll up, tweet, and there would be a whole parking lot full at, like, a tar Target parking lot at midnight, full. We'd be like, what's going on here? As soon as we roll up, everyone in that parking lot would get out of the car and come line up. You Jesus know? So, Yeah, Christ. it was crazy. It was really crazy. When did you know that like it could go beyond a truck? Uh, it was probably within those first few months. Like few uh, months. we we as a team, uh, we were all like in between jobs, like everyone at Kogi, and then we gave ourselves like four months. We started in November, and we were like, by the end of February, if this shit don't pop off, we got to go back to the real world. Yeah. And uh, by like January, it was crazy. It was it was crazy. It was like flash two thousand people on the street. Like going I remember you from saying, spot to spot. You were like, yeah. hey, you should come do stand up at it. I did. Yeah. I like, did. You, I was, can, you can stand on top of the truck. I was worried about you. You'd be like, this one. <laughs> 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 I was worried about it. Like, that's right. And I did tell you to stand up. I was like, yeah, I was worried. I, that's how much I care. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, if you do stand up, we have a line for two hours, just do stand up. I you might, stand -up. Someone, and, and, yeah. There might be an agent there or and, something. And, yeah. Well, no, you, say, you were like, Famous people come through all the time. And I yeah. was like, I don't know about that. And then yeah. the next day, I got a text from Steve Byrne going, Vince Vaughn and I are trying to get Kogi tacos. Yeah. Do you know Roy? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, what's he look like? I was yeah. like, you, Steve. Kind of like your dad. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You I'm Steve's dad. I'm your dad. I'm your dad, you Steve. <laughs> but yeah. it was crazy. Now, yeah. I hear, I'm always, I'm cooking for you today. Yes. I don't forget, I'm cooking. I kind of just want your chef to just cook it. I just want to sit <laughs> right there waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Jump in. We are at we are at best friends. By the way, I've uh -huh. been here. I've mm -hmm. eaten here. I don't I don't know if I knew that it was yours. I my picture is all have. over the place. Yeah, but you know how There's it is, There's a huge right? picture in my face, like, right? Yeah, he's like, that's just some fucking other guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was your racist, like, that's just some Asian guy. I was guy like, no, we're at David Chang's place. Yeah, David Chang's. <laughs> By the way, you did say we're going to get David Chang's place. Yeah. <laughs> so, wait, I got to ask you this, though. Uh -huh. I wanna, I'm curious. Was, do you guys credit, like, the first fusion of... Asian food and mm. Latin food, or another food. Is that Matsuhisa? Is he the first guy that did that? that? Yeah, uh, Peruvian. Yeah, so he uh, did so from he's, Japan. Yeah, he did what's called like Nikkei cuisine, which is Peruvian Japanese. There's so many Japanese immigrated sure. to Peru, and he did that whole with uh, mixing of the lime and the peppers and the soy sauce. So he's OG it. with that. He's OG. Sure. Yeah. Nobu is like our. I don't know who's who's Nobu to you guys. You're. Who's the biggest? That every, no matter how big you get, Eddie. Like, he's the Eddie Murphy, yeah, right? He's, Eddie. He's, yeah. the, he's our Eddie Murphy. I was gonna say Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is yeah. the shit. He's our Eddie Murphy. Like every time every chef gets to a certain mountaintop, we're like, Psh, we did that shit, you yeah. know? And we look up and Nobu's there, like That's floating, cool. like this. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like oh, yeah. welcome. <laughs> Can I get you guys a vodka? What kind? <laughs> Why I'm having porosos. I've earned my Monday. <laughs> Is that what this hat's all about? Yeah, <laughs> we are branding whores. <laughs> Do you guys want to, Tommy, can I get you a, yeah. can I get yes. cranberry vodkas? Why is it porosos? Because it, it leads me to believe it's tequila. But no, it's vodka. no, it's, Tom is uh -huh. uh, Peruvian, so he okay. speaks fluent Spanish. Okay. And uh, it's for bears, for the bears. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, well, so our, okay. our, our, okay, our that's podcast is two for. bears, one yes, cave, of course. and all our fans are the bears. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah, it was it's a blend. It's You're like Peruvian? half Peruvian. Half yeah. Peruvian. He's he's a fusion restaurant. <laughs> I'm a fusion. Yeah, You're a fusion. You're a fusion. Yeah. yeah. Um, did, did, I'm did, a little did, Pizarro and a little fucking white guy. Yeah. What's the um? Mm -hmm. What did you get any pushback from like? the Korean community or the Mexican community when you started doing what you're doing? Or uh, it no, just the love? Mexican community, the Latino, uh, Central American, Mexican community in LA embraced us. At first they were like, 
they were they were bewildered. They were like, "What's going on here?" It's such a crazy. But they uh, ate it. The, the thing about the kogi thing, taco is, once you eat it, everything makes sense. It's yeah. so you know? fucking crazy. I, you know, I really, yeah. honestly, I, there's a couple things I remember putting in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> is that a bad memory? Like, God. Yeah. <laughs> what are you thinking about putting your mouth there? Alonzo yeah. Bowden. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but I remember the first time I had mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, it really was so different. And then I remember one time you came over and you were like, I was making uh, scrambled eggs or something. Yeah. And you just real quick went into the kitchen and chopped up a little kimchi and sprinkled it in there for me. I go, what's that? And you're like, trust me, I'll make it better. Yeah. And then I was like, what? And then I, and then I fucking, <laughs> I fuck with kimchi hard. Like that is, I'm my favorite thing. Cause we used to go to the West yeah. Third Street School yeah. and the, all, all Korean oh, over yeah. there. <laughs> and they, the moms would bring me the gallon jar of kimchi that their mom had buried. Yeah. Support for Something's Burning comes from Eight Sleep. At this point, I am certain you've heard of Eight Sleep. Their buzzworthy mattress cover called the pod can be added to your existing mattress to automatically cool down or warm up each side of your bed and in turn, improve your sleep quality dramatically. And I have proof of this, guys. The pod cover by 8sleep fits on your bed like a fitted sheet. It includes seamless sensors that track your sleep and health while you sleep. Stay asleep with automatic temperature adjustments throughout the night to cool and warm as you need based on your personal sleep patterns and environment. It's clinically validated for deeper sleep, fewer wake-ups, and falling asleep faster. Here is my guarantee. So we put ours on our bed, right? It's really discreet. It's on the side of my bed. You can't even notice that it's there. It's a little thing. You get to an app, and then you set it up. My heart rate last night, all-time low, 52 beats per minute. And I'm telling you, it was because I slept cool. I did not sweat through the night because Leanne likes to sleep hot. I slept cool. I had zero wake-ups. Woke up this morning, 99% sleep uh, last night. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. I think it's because of 8 Sleep. Improve the way you sleep by using my link at 8sleep.com slash burning for $200 off plus free shipping on their high-tech pod 3 cover. That's 8sleep.com slash burning for a better, smarter sleep. Like, bro, yeah. you know that in my like my wife uh -huh. is obsessed with kimchi. With no, with all Korean foods. She makes sundobu, bulgogi, oh, kalbi. Oh, those are deep she, cuts. Like, she, That's like, the and, best. Like when we when we were in um, L. A., uh -huh. we would go. She, we would only go to like hardcore Korean because we lived in K Town for a yeah. while. And then even when we moved Thank to the you. Valley, there was this place like Grandma's Kitchen that she uh -huh. would all like. So we would go there and be like, she's like if, it was like kind of the rule, like yeah. if we're the only white faces here, we'll take a seat. Yeah. So like, whoa, whoa. That, that was, yeah. He that, took me to a fucking restaurant where they didn't even speak English. Yeah. You remember that with Korean I barbecue you, yeah, yeah. on Wilshire? He was so out of pocket. He was so out of his place. He was, was like, like, everything was just like. I'm not meeting the meat. And he's like, you got to cook it first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He thought it was sushi. He's like, eat well, raw we meat. Went, we went to a Korean place once where, what was the Dodgers Cheers. Korean pitcher? Cheers, uh, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Welcome. I love watching your, all your success. Ooh. Oh, that's. This is a cranberry vodka? Is that what we're trying to do? Okay. Like Rose's has got a great taste. It's got a real round. I, I, I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I would like, I would love to, you're not to interrupt your story. No, 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 no. This is how I work now. Okay, okay. I'm curious <laughs> no. what you're going to say. We, were, yeah, we went to a Korean place, a uh, restaurant, uh -huh. and the, the pitcher for the Dodgers, the guy pitching at the time, was Korean. Park Chan yeah. So mm -hmm. the, the Chang Ho Park, Chang Ho Park. Yeah. So everybody in this restaurant, this is like a yeah. like, like authentic Korean place. They were all watching the game and going fucking nuts. Yes. And then we walked in, and he was pitching such a good game. Yeah. That a, a older gentleman who spoke like broken English came uh -huh. over, and he apologized for how rowdy they were being. Yeah. And we were like, no yeah. big deal. We're just yeah. eating dinner. And he brought a beer for me. Yeah. And then he put a glass and he was like, here you go. And then my wife goes, what about me? And he goes, hey, yeah. like, let's fucking brunch. She's loose. <laughs> yeah. And then he fucking gave her. I mean, we all had to be back together and watch him. But he couldn't believe she yeah. wanted a beer too. <laughs> Did you say, I, you said his name in, in the Korean oh, way. Oh, yeah, yeah. In Korean, Korean, they put the last name first. Or like that, so Park chan yeah. So it'd be Kreischer Burt. Uh, I, I Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Kim uh, Jong-un, I, yeah. wrote, I wrote a joke and got in a lot of trouble in the community. Because I go, how crazy is it that he named all his kids Kim? 
<laughs> and man, it was like right around the Asian hate time, and they're like, "This the is the Asian hate time." November of twenty-two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they were mad at that and joke. They fucking lost their shit, and then I deleted it. Yeah, <laughs> and then right. once you delete it, yeah, they're like right. scouring anything yeah. I've ever done. Yeah, and then, of course. And, but but that's crazy. I, I that's how you'd say his name, Park. Park Chan Ho, but then it's Chan Ho Park, yeah. For us. Park, for us. That's yeah, crazy. For you guys. So if I went to Korea, would they be like, Christ your bird? Uh, no, they just, they, they. <laughs> I don't know what they call you, but they wouldn't call you that. <laughs> so wait, so. Loud, very loud. Yeah, guy. loud guy. One American. They call one you one American. Hey, you will not miss him. You will not miss him. Loud, loud American. <laughs> the, one of my favorite, uh, I'm going to tell, I'll tell the story and then I'm going to start cooking uh, and I'll let you guys talk. Yeah, but, yeah. uh. My favorite, favorite, favorite story. There's a few I tell of you. I tell the Rock Sugar talking about yeah. uh, Kogi. I tell my favorite one. Daughter's birthday. We have it at God rest his soul. Uh, what's his name? Uh, just passed away. Uh, okay. rec not recently. Uh, Campanelli. Good oh, friend of yours. Mark Peel. Mark Peel. Mark Peel. Shout out Mark Peel. Shout out Mark Peel. Yeah. Great dude. Great yeah. dude. Great dude. Campanelli. I have such fond memories of yeah. that place. They do, cheap, they do grilled cheese Thursdays. Yeah. Leanne and I would go up, you could afford it, and you'd have grilled cheese, a couple beers. Yeah. Oh, it's the best. It was right from our, a block from our house. But for your daughter's birthday, we go and we have dinner there. All the yeah. girls are in a private That's right. room. That's right. And you were vegan at the time. And I said, Yeah, I was messing around. And I, I was, said, What's going on? And he goes, I was fucking around trying to find out, you know. Okay, he was like, I hope you found out. Yeah, I found you, know, out. you know why he did it? Because, uh. and I love this story, because uh. he's like, Meat's been overwhelming my palate, and I thought as a chef I should really cleanse my palate yeah. and try to find that makes sense. find flavor again. Yeah. And I, I and I go I I think of that so much because I think in like especially in podcasting, it's like resetting. Yeah, it's know? like totally resetting. Reset. Yeah. It's it's a crazy, mm -hmm. but it, it's so when we did this vodka, yeah. I wasn't drinking. Uh -huh. I didn't drink for like three months, and so we had to taste test it. Yeah. So I was like, oh, this is the best way to taste test it. So I was just pouring it on my tongue and I swish it in my mouth. And I spit it out, yeah. and I was looking, and it was a real way to taste the flavor of it, because there were some that were spicy. We picked, we picked like it went uh -huh. through this whole crazy yeah. distillation yep. process. They gave us so many samples, yep. and the funny thing is, we of like the twelve the variations uh -huh. you first try, we both locked in on the, on same, the same two. One. Yeah, same we were two. like these two, same like, two, and then one was a peppery flavor, and one had uh -huh. a I, I I say a round flavor, yeah, because I love a vodka that I love a vodka that doesn't overwhelm. Your drink. It just okay. tickles your arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You look cute today. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> um, all right, so what, what am I making? Before you do this, yeah. I have to bring this up. Okay. I was there 15 years ago. The last time I saw you and had dinner with you yeah. was because he, he cooked. Was cooking. And I was there. But this, the setup you should know is this, because I actually felt very bad for him. So at that time, we're bro comics. I'm definitely yeah. broker. And so it was a treat for my wife and I. Yeah. We would go to Bert and Leanne's place. Yeah. And, and here's the thing, man. He would make really incredible dinner. Like, I, was, I, was, I would walk away being like, this is like going to a restaurant. Like, Bert would make elaborate meals, and they were delicious. Like, yeah. he would, the whole time, he'd be, he'd be in the kitchen chopping stuff up, throwing in the ingredients, and, like, it would be like a feast. And I was like, oh, man. And then he, I go, he goes, Hey, I'm having one of my neighbors come tonight. He's a chef. So it's kind of yeah. like, yeah. it's kind of exciting. It's Steps also, up my game. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> yeah. and there's like a little pressure to it. You're cooking for a yeah. guy that cooks for a living. Yep. And so I see him in there, ba -da -da, chopping stuff up, adding yeah. things. <laughs> <laughs> it was chili, I think, right? Yeah. <laughs> Taking the first bite, and I was like, holy shit, what did you do? <laughs> He's like, I think I put in, <laughs> I think I put in spice when I thought it was salt. And I was like, oh my God. It was, it it was, was jalapenos instead of green chili. Yeah, I remember. Oh, yeah, I remember. Be Ortega Roy, chili. That's right, Roy, you put jalapenos. Picked up what I put nine cans of jalapenos. <laughs> In, instead of nine cans of chili. And I remember Roy looked at him and he goes, how many jalapenos did you put in? I go, just one. And then nine things of chili. He goes, uh-uh. <laughs> and I remember saying to you, how do I fix it? He actually, he proposed an idea. I remember that. At the time, you, oh, were, like, right. you were like, well, you could, like, I forget if it was like, put some sugar or something to yeah. like counterbalance it. And you're like, it's still edible. But then I was like, 
Oh man, he thinks you really don't know what the fuck you're doing because this is inedible. I remember like you, you, went, inedible, you went to your house and made yourself dinner. Yeah, you're like, I'll I see did. you guys later. <laughs> nice try. I did. Like, that's like, that's did like, that's like when you're doing stand up and they're like, guess who's coming tonight? The fucking yeah. president of show business is <laughs> coming tonight. And you're like, all right. All and right. then you just eat shit. And the guy's like, no, I walked out during your set. It's like heartbreaking. I that night is It was a departure from the norm, for sure, for yeah. him. He's always been a great cook. Yeah. He's <laughs> a little embarrassed. I think what you said at the end of it was, uh -huh. I think the only way to fix this is to throw it in the trash. Oh, yes. Yeah, you go, well, you just throw it in the trash. Yeah, yeah. I said, well, no, other than that, you know, no, I think that's the only way to fix it. <laughs> that's the only way. It was so, Tom and I ate it. Tom, oh, was, Tom was so broke, yeah. he ate it. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah, I'm going to have diarrhea just tomorrow. I'll have a hot diarrhea tomorrow. It'll be all right. Yeah. Oh, that was some good times in that apartment. So like, I, many. It was so. I mean, I, I loved that. Our apartments were the yeah. sexiest apartments in the world. There's, you remember that apartment? It's just like thirty foot ceiling. Yeah, the rooftop. God. Rooftop. Damn. Um, that little jacuzzi that held one person. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right. uh, but was I, I was just thinking about those days, like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, seven. Just I don't know. It was just like, even though we're all broke, it just seemed like. A simpler time, you know? Like, oh. even though it wasn't that long ago, it just seemed, I miss it. I miss it. Yeah. I miss it a lot. I miss, I miss it. I, I didn't, wasn't on my phone. Yeah. I wasn't online. That's right. I, I mean, I, 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 like, we'd, every now and then, getting something online was, like, special. You remember oh, when yeah. Kyle Cease and Doug Stanhope thing went down? And uh, I remember you came over yeah. and you were like, oh, and, but you, you still had to, you like, had to, like how, how do I get this? Up? How yeah, do I yeah. get yeah. this? Or also, right. I remember we, uh, we had a viewing party for your Comedy Central special in that apartment. That's so we funny. Did. Yeah. That's yes. so funny. We just totally dumb. That you know that's I that's that. 15 years ago today. Yeah. yeah. You wore your stupid shirt. I know. It's yeah, the that only was the era where, yeah, no. where comics still had those clips on Comedy Central, right? You would get those yeah. and they would run those at night. I remember that. Comedy Central was fucking huge. Now, now it's not around. It's fucking embarrassing now. It's like a <laughs> That is such a fucking shit show. Uh -huh. You guys suck. <laughs> we used to think you were the best. You're the worst. Yeah. What? It's like Food Network. Oh. This show is sponsored by Talkspace. Do you think seeing a therapist or a psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? Try Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. With Talkspace, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your own home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up child care in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy. It is all I do, and, and I, I'm telling you, online therapy is the best thing in the world. It's the best thing in the world. If they had had it in the 80s, I would have been in therapy earlier. As a listener of this podcast, You'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash burning. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash burning to get $80 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash burning. I wonder, do you, so like thinking about like, especially like me and you, uh -huh. all the fucking great people yeah. we've been around yeah. and connected with, and look, just we'll do Roy and Rogan. Do you think there's people in this world that just have never met anyone good? No. Or, or are we specifically good at identifying good? Like, I don't understand how, like, all of a sudden you go, like, I'm, we've known each other for yeah. that fucking long. That's crazy to me. Yeah. Like, or, or the fact that we liked Rogan before the podcast. Like, you know, like, yeah. there's there's something, like, almost like a, like, you can pick out a good a good chef like can pick out good flavors and go oh let's make that throw that in, you know like I mean all the people, people think about like think about think about this this will even blow your mind, like Shane Gillis gets canceled from Saturday Night Live, but I'm like I still like him, and then all of a sudden when no one likes him yeah. and then he fucking skyrockets yeah. Tim Dillon Mark Norman or like just all these chefs David Chang these it's crazy that like I think as humans we all have the ability to interact and meet each other and fantastic situations, but a lot of people are, they don't trust themselves or are scared, you know? And I think what differentiates is like, you like double down on someone and dig in. And a lot of people are a little scared sometimes. And then, 
But everyone has the ability to connect. With, yeah, like, I wonder if special. there's people who are like, yeah, I met that guy, told him to go fuck himself. Yeah. And then they're like, ugh. Yeah, then there are, but those are the people who are like, I, I don't know I go through that too, because I'm stuff. a fan first. Because, you know, like, my oh. life didn't change until 15 years ago. And sometimes I'm like, I want to go up to someone that I really admire. Like Bobby Lee? Yeah, like Bobby Lee. <laughs> and he's a dick, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a dick <laughs> in that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm just like, you know, Bobby I don't want to force this. Bobby was like, hey, hey, hey. hey. Bobby hey. was a fan. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. What? Let's put Bobby out Let's last. Let's put him out last. So I know Bobby. We go way back. I did this podcast. We're friends. We have mutual friends. And then we were at a party, I went up to him. Just like if I saw you. I yeah. went up to him, hey, Bobby, what's up? That I was a fan. He was like, not no. right now. Not right now. <laughs> not right yeah. now. <laughs> what's oh up, Bobby? Bobby? What's up, Bobby Lee? <laughs> what's up, Bobby Lee? All right, I should start cooking. Yeah. Um, all right, oh, this food. so tell me. Uh, this is, yeah, a, chef, this is a chef truck. We're in Best Friend right now, but I just opened uh, a spot on the other side of the lobby called The Chef Truck with John Favreau. And, oh, um, well, let's fucking talk about John Favreau. John's a fan of you guys. Of us? Yes. Face you know, I said I was face filming this with him. FaceTime. I'm Android. Sorry. Oh, you're Android? <laughs> yeah. Fuck it. He'll FaceTime. That's, why you know, that's how I protect John. Um, I FaceTime everybody. Give <laughs> me his number. I'll FaceTime him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know you're a fan. Answer. Uh, but I said I was filming with you guys. I, I was like, he knew you guys. I was like, whoa. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, you know, he made the movie Chef. And we have the Chef Show, which we had Bill Burr on. You know, yeah. he was one of our first episodes. I love, I love the Chef Show. And then, I love. Oh, thank you, the Chef Show. And so we just turned that into the Chef Truck. So it's been like this trilogy. So I, I mean, awesome. I, I can't, I can't tell you. I only work out watching food uh, uh -huh. stuff. I put food on the yeah. TV. It's my. It's just. I mean, I, I, the, dude, anything Asian is amazing. There's a show on Netflix just about anything broth. Asian. <laughs> just about <laughs> broth. That's a good name for a restaurant. <laughs> anything Asian. Yes. <laughs> Any, by the way, Asian food is just better. It's, it's got like a... David Chang will tell you that. Me, the, the thing that we say is if we could teach the rest of the world to eat like Asian people, shit would be all right. I, dude, I just got shit back. Be all right. Right. Totally. I just got back. And it, yeah. you know, it was to do shows, but it was yeah. really a food tour. Like yeah. between Tokyo, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Oh, shit. Each place... That's the best. That's I mean, like the trilogy. It was like, like the, the trilogy, trifecta, right? Yeah. Like it was like, it was, and here's the thing, even the, like the, the, uh, the, the Indian food in yeah. Hong Kong, which uh -huh. obviously has like Asian influences, but like God. it was so outstanding. The dim sum was obviously outstanding. Yep. The, oh my, the Wagyu, we went to Wagyu Mafia, which was just, oh, a, that but here's He's the thing, here. I was here. just selling somebody else and Actually, Chef, uh, who we were talking about, Philip Lee told, was saying this. How, you know in the, in the States a lot of time, when you stay in a hotel, let's yeah. say in, in whatever city, you're in fucking Philadelphia. Yeah. You stay in the hotel, like it's time for dinner. You're like, we got to get out of the hotel because otherwise we're going to have the mostly. dinner at the hotel. Yeah. Mostly. Mostly, yep. But in Tokyo... The good restaurants are in the hotel. The, the, the lobby yeah. restaurant has <clears throat> dinner that you would pay like an extraordinary yep. amount of money and it's the best you've ever had. Like yep. the sirloin steak we had at the the lobby of the Edition Hotel yeah. in Tokyo was top five steak I've ever had in my but life. But the thing, the, the, the truest thing about like Asian food and Asian kitchens is that it, it's like dishonorable to serve bad food, you know? Right. And that's what I think is the difference that maybe the Western world, you know, can't oh, comprehend yeah. yeah is like you know out here sometimes you know i'm american through and through but it's like sometimes we got played a lot of places where people don't give a shit about food yeah. you know and they're just throwing it around whatever there in asia it's like it, it's a dishonor to like serve this not exactly the way it's supposed to be and that's right. why anything from a from a 7-eleven like you that said was, earlier to a uh, hotel lobby it's it's not the usual trope because it extends you know? beyond yeah. the kitchen it yep. felt like when you were in Asia that it's dishonorable to not do any job without any job. pride yep. and with us. So basically, I think what you're saying, and I'll say it for you, is just Asians are better people. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Luckily, China's going to take us over. <laughs> Luckily. And I can't wait. Yeah. I can't believe how, like, I've known you so long. Yeah. Tom is, you are genuinely passionate about food. I yeah. love food. It's crazy, it. like, how much I, you I'm, get excited I'm, about I'm picking food. picking up on that, too, yeah. Yeah, like, because you really do love... You've always... 
it's crazy that you're skinny and you love food. I remember when you're fat and you love food. Well, that's the thing is you have to go he through would, the process. He had, he had, <laughs> he had hot sauce in his car. Stop. He, <laughs> I'm being serious. He would travel with hot sauce yeah. just in case. You're like always, uh, Celine, the movie Selena, the boyfriend where you had the holster. But here's the <laughs> truth, and I've said it before. It's my wife's hot sauce. She's <laughs> the one that travels with hot sauce. Oh, okay. Because we would go to... Uh -huh. um, Mama Yuka's on, on Vermont, Yucatan's, that little... Yeah, uh, and Yuka, they, Yuka's. Yuka's. Yeah, yeah. And they, that was like Christina's spot. Mm -hmm. They don't give you hot sauce. So she started to put Tapatio in the car and Cholula so that if we went there, she would have her own. That's, That's really funny. smart. So wait, so uh, Chef... Chef Chuck, John Favreau. You like John? I <laughs> By the way, oh, that on. movie's great. Oh, that movie's great. Yeah. The Mandalorian is fucking oh, unbelievable. What he does, what he does is Everything. crazy. Yeah. I'll tell you, his best movie ever is Made. You ever yes. see Made with of Vince Vaughn? It's yeah. the Louis Anderson has of my course. DVD. The outtakes yeah. of Made are the funniest thing I've ever listened to in my life. Yeah, because it's just him and Vince. Just I would argue that Vince Vaughn should never make another movie without John Favreau. He should just, because John Favreau knows him and loves him. Yes. And he makes him. But he made a lot of movies. I know, since but then. whatever. <laughs> but like John Favreau and John, Vince Vaughn. John, you're fucking up, man. John Favreau <laughs> should do all of Vince Vaughn's movies. But John Favreau can do all his own stuff, because like, uh -huh. he's amazing. But Vince, that guy loves that guy, and uh -huh. he shows him the, it's like. He puts him in the best he, man, possible light. Yep. Yeah, and I think situation. I think it's I, I mean I don't know I I love John I was on a plane flight with John Favreau. You were uh, one time yeah I didn't I, I was I was not even close to famous at all uh -huh. but it got upgraded and he, he was with his family and, and I you were both like you were right next to him. I have yeah. certain moments in yeah. life where I go and it's really shallow and but I'll share it but I go that would be cool to be able to fly your whole family first class. I yeah. was like because I, I was getting upgraded. And I was like, man, can you imagine a time when you could fly your family first class? And I was like, you know what's crazy? Is he has a he has a butler now. He has a chauffeur. Yeah, yeah. yeah he does. What? He's, he's, he does not. And I just private I plane. leapfrogged it. Now we just fly private. It's crazy. I don't need it. And now I look at John Favreau and I go, I'm better than him. <laughs> yeah, you loser. <laughs> yeah, oh, wow. yeah. Why didn't you fly private? Yeah, <laughs> Well, now I look at that and I realize he wasn't doing that well. <laughs> <laughs> this is pre. No. This is pre uh, Iron Man. <laughs> Isn't that crazy though? That I look at certain things like. Uh, <laughs> do you remember how crazy it was? The idea of buying a house, like like the idea that you'd go yeah. to someone's house and you go, "You guys own this? How did you Dude, do keeping that? a positive bank account?" When that I was, was younger, real, yeah, yeah, that was some real shit. It was it's just like fucking very yeah, real. Yeah, like hundreds, like to have hundreds of dollars. Like constant in the bank, I'm like, wow, you know. Like, when was at what at what point did you go? Oh, we're good. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the restaurant business. Right? Yeah. I'm not a comic. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't I haven't let go of my breath yet. Man. Really? Yeah, the restaurant business is no, hard. It's crazy. Man. It's hard. Really? It's and always... no matter how big you get, you're always chasing the sun, you know, because our business re relies on so many expenses going out every day. If we have like three bad, you saw it in COVID. Oh, Restaurants just falling up because it doesn't matter how successful a restaurant is, if you have like four or five bad days in a row, it literally puts its foot on your chest and you wow. could be closing. That's how bad the restaurant business really? is. Really? Yeah. But we do it because we don't know how to do anything else and we love it. We love taking care of people. It's like, I guess like when you guys were doing stand up before, like when you're doing like staying in motels and doing shows and stuff like that. It's not really about the money. It's just no, you know, it's you about the craft. You, you gotta, gotta you love, love you gotta know? love. I that's what I love about this show. I love, yeah. I love pleasing people. I love making. Uh, I have a hard time in conversation, but I love making people happy, and I love making meals for people. I love making people laugh. I like to host. I like to have everyone to have a good time. Yeah. Um, even like we did the blackjack tournament yesterday, I enjoyed welcoming people in and then finding them a seat, and then yeah. like his table was just fucking hot. I mean, it was <laughs> literally it was it was <laughs> Will Compton, Taylor Lewan. Jason, Kelsey, Tom, it was it was the wild, I'm leaving someone I'm sure, but like, and it was crazy. Wow. Now, I think some people, I was at a different table, I was with uh, with Anthony Pettis. The punter and the no. place kicker. <laughs> yeah, 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 technically. <laughs> well, no, Anthony Pettis is a fucking legend, but I was with yeah. Anthony Pettis and this guy, Bo. No, well, he didn't show up until later. Uh. Now, I, what's crazy <laughs> is most people would go, God, I wish I was that table. I think Anthony yeah. and... Bo were thinking, I want to be at that table. But I looked at it, and, I, and this is crazy, but I go, I, I kind of sat that table. Like, I, yeah. sat, I remember going, Jason, sit over here. And 
Taylor Lund, and Tom's already gambling, get in there. And I was like, fuck yeah. I felt pride in watching you guys have fun. And then I was like, yeah. well, now I gotta make my table as fun so that the people I'm sitting with yeah. don't feel These like they're missing blackjack out. Blackjack tables? Or blackjack yeah. tables. Oh, okay. Then Baker Mayfield and his wife showed up. I yeah. give her a thousand dollars. She's like, so look at me, she goes, we have a lot of money. And I was like, yeah. I do too. And then I was like, <laughs> at the end I was like, did you want to give that back to me? Give that back. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, take care. <laughs> it, was, it was a prop. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, I was just spotting you. I was like, yeah. 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 She just put it in her purse and left. <laughs> but uh, but but we had so much. Then our table got really fucking hot, and we had really yeah. fun. It was just, it's. I love making people happy. Our, our table. You've been was like rocking, that. You, you haven't changed. You know, even when we were at the apartment, your your house was like. A welcome pad, you know. And oh, I loved, I loved popping changed, that door open and yeah. just leaving it open. Just leaving it open. I yeah. love that. I love that energy. What? So, oh, okay. So, what am I making today? I think oh, we right. did it. Are it, we good? Are we are done? We, oh, are we close? close. Well, should we, we just still have, have to cook? We gotta cook. But that's we what I'm thinking. We can just have a conversation. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Here, I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna cook. Okay. No? All right, so we're going to keep the knife work at a minimum for you. You're going to have to cut the radish and the garnishes. Okay, where's uh, uh, there's where's a the knife good? right there. Oh. And so just cut these as thin as possible. This is how I'd cut green onions, okay? Oh, I right. cut it like that, and then I uh -huh. get rid of these, and then I'd go. Beautiful. Do you stop at the long parts? No, the whole thing. Really? Yeah. And then we'll take these off. We're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right, so then now what we can do, Chef, can you, should we get and start grilling first? What are you gonna call us when you say, are we just Bert and Tom, we're not Chef? <laughs> you're just Bert and Tom. What dude. do you call, it? Is, are there like, is there a dude who just washes dishes and you're like, dish? Uh, well, what do you call your, that's a good question. What do you call uh, your newbies, like day one guys? Uh, just by their name? Sorry, you, sorry, you know, sorry, sorry, did anyone catch what I just did? <laughs> anyone catch what, I just threw the trash in the sink yeah. and he just went, that doesn't go that there. That doesn't go there. <laughs> Yeah, we don't call anyone chef except the chef. The so, chef. We, um, what do we call each other? I mean, we're called cooks and commies and dish, but we don't call each other that. Yeah. Uh, just like you don't call a grip a grip, I guess, like yeah. in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we call each other by our names. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Cousin. I call most of my cooks cuz. Or cuz. Yeah. What's up, Sam? <laughs> All right. What's up, cuz? Okay. Yeah. So, we have a uh, Peggy short rib here, uh, three bone short rib. There's going to be bone here, one, two, three. I just realized something. What's that? So the big barbecue dinosaur ribs that you get, that's this cut that way. Crosscut. Yep. Yeah, crosscut. What, what, what would be the reason? Like, I would assume if I'm selling ribs to someone, I'm going to sell them the long rib. Well, it, there's also just a different way to cut it so yeah. that you can get more slices per pound. You know, and then yeah. also you cut it thinner because those big dinosaur cuts you have to braise. This, if you cut it thin, you don't have to braise it. You can just grill it. Oh, so, yeah, it's an easier way to eat it. Yeah. Like the other one, you got to cook for like three hours, yeah, four hours. Exactly. This one, you just, this is like, this was my first. And then first, this is a boneless of that. This of was that my thing. first, like, the, my first finger fucking into Korean food. <laughs> like the first time I got one of these, I was like, I was like, shit. You get them at Trader Joe's frozen. Yeah. And you could grill them, and I was like, these are good. No, and I then I was like, I make great Korean food. Watch this, Trader Joe's, <laughs> dump it on. I remember going to the first time in, in Koreatown, like yeah. going to a spot on 6th Street, yep. you know, and getting like Kalbi, Bulgo, and being like, yeah. holy, shit, holy shit, this is what they're up to? And, yep. the, and the garlic, like the clothes on the, on the, on the like when they gave you the yeah. grill, were like enormous and all around it. And the flavor was just unbelievable. Being it's, Korean must be like dating, uh, dating Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's just like, yeah, she's just my girlfriend. And you're like, that's what they're like with food. And they're like, yeah, but if we got to take it one time, we'd be like, couldn't stop talking about stop it. Talking. You're like, I just grew up with it, man. Yeah. All right, are we grilling? Yeah, that's I didn't know where you're going if I see yeah. where you're going. I'm yeah, just trying sure. to slide some yeah. Super Bowl right, stuff right, so in. Over right. here. Um, and then. Oh, fuck. And then, and then Bert, once yeah. he gets all the meat down, season the other side. Sure. Yeah, salt and pepper. Let him get in For there, both, sure. right? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. There you go. All right. Perfect. And then season the other sides. There we go. Yeah, you can go ahead and start uh, lathering them. And then... Cousin, not now! <laughs> I love the bear. You guys like the bear? 
Oh yeah, my friends. Uh, a lot of my friends are on that show. Like, you know, uh, Matt, Maddie, right? Maddie, Chris Store, Courtney Store, all of them. Orange juice sambal. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now, through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boosts. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood RA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. Perfect. I kind of like this version of Something's Burning. And Bert, why don't you do the same thing? Tommy's got more ribs for you, bud. Do the same thing with these. And we're going to pop those in the oven. Pop them in the oven? Glaze these. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. I'll put them in the oven. Okay, we're going to glaze them. I'm going to... Right, we gotta glaze them first. Oh, you gotta glaze them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking good, guys. Dip it. Just fucking do this, buddy. Just dip it in. Just take it and dip it in. What? It's like lube. You can't use too much. Come on, man. (laughs) You did a good job. (laughs) Uh, How long do you... This is a pretty hot grill. Yeah, it's pretty hot. It's pretty hot. So... Catch it. Three minutes on the side. These guys, every like thirty seconds, just want to like give them like a. What is that? A ninety degree turn? By the way, Roy's recutting my green onions. Of course. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Roy, you see, like are you seeing this? I didn't. I caught it. Roy's recutting my I green onions. I looked at these. I like. Uh, <laughs> I want to do this. This is how we should do something that's burning. I kind of like this lifting. You know. These are probably. It's interactive. It's fun. I feel like I'm hosting. Hey, guys, welcome back to Something's Burning. My name is Bert Kreischer. I'm here with celebrity chef Roy Joy and my buddy Tom Comedian, Tom Circura. I've had two Ooh. drinks. It's yeah. early. All right. Yeah. God damn. Tom, do you cook? I used to cook more. Now the servants do it. The servants? No. <laughs> no I, don't, I don't cook as much as I used to, though. You we know? have a... It's, yeah. What do you guys eat on tour? Do you guys really have a chef on tour? Or? Uh, bro, I oh eat my ribeyes God. every night. Every night. I eat a ribeye every night. Come on, shout out Dave Williamson, too. Jesus oh, Christ. Oh, Roy, we got this buddy Dave Williamson, who's a great comedian, but he's a uh-huh. master barbecue guy. Okay. We, would travel, Legit. Legit. we would travel with a uh-huh. rec tech smoker, a travel smoker. Uh-huh. He would set it up, put on an A5 Wagyu brisket at like okay. 3 in the morning. Uh-huh. Stay up all night with it, watch it, baste it, fucking spritz it, and yeah. he would cook insane barbecue. He Unbelievable. Would bring, bring the group, bring the smoker. He, with we you traveled guys. with fucking two travel smokers. Holy shit! In my tour bus. Yeah, I know. I think that's how you gained fifty pounds, though. Too. I think that's how I got so fat for real. Seriously, is that I was just eating and drinking all night. So when you guys go on tour with the tour bus, is that tour bus yours or you Fine. rent it? I you, owned it. You own. Yeah. You own the bus. Yeah. Holy shit. I'm a tour you bus hear guy. that Joe Coy? <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm more of a tour bus guy. Yeah. Tom will rent tour buses, but he's not like, he's more like a hotel guy. Oh. This guy off. All right, Bert, you're going to take, uh, <laughs> you're going to take Tom's meat. And, uh, <laughs> Ooh, I can't wait to take Tom's meat. take Tom's meat. for this day. And uh, chop it up. Um, go uh-huh. ahead and just so, chop up everything like, without the, bo- take, the take the bones out. out. Um, when yeah. you get to him, but just chop them up into small yeah. cubes. Okay. Because basically what we're doing is we're making taco yeah. meat. Okay. Uh, that should be good on that, yeah. and then start chopping up a few of these. Once you chop everything Flip up, these. just kind of mix it together. Uh, mix all the both meats? Yeah, mix them together. This is going to be our taco meat. Oh, my God. Once you're done with that, go ahead and rinse that knife off in the sink right there. 
And now I'm going to have you cut the garnishes. Uh, these are the garnishes. So go ahead and cut the limes into quarters or okay. eighths and cut these the same way. Okay. okay. Yes, chef. I love doing that. That's what I like hearing. Is that, that's Favreau's favorite part, right? He Saints. loves being, Favreau loves being in. No, he loves learning. He loves, like he, when he, I watch the chef show, yeah. he loves fucking cooking. He loves and cooking, he loves, loves learning. learning, and he's a sponge of information. And, you know, for someone like John, he's always in charge, right? So it's like kind of great sometimes to really learn from someone else. Yeah. And uh, I, I go through that too, being a chef all the time, you're always the one that has to have all the answers. But sometimes I love just being not the person. Well, in then charge. we'll get you on stage, have you do stand up. Yeah. You should do, what we should do is we should do stand up at the South Beach Comedy F or uh, South Beach Fil Food and Wine uh -huh. Festival and have sh teach chefs stand up and have you do stand up about like cooking. Yeah. Like where you're like, man, man. I was in the weeds so bad one time and everyone's like, been there. <laughs> okay, so, all right, why don't you walk uh, Tom through re searing this on the plancha? Okay, give it a quick da 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 da. Oh, nice. Look at you. Okay. Ooh. Oh, shit. All right. I just put it back, or throw it away. He's gonna take you over there to sear the meats. So this is gonna come together really quickly. But you can see, you can see everything is building blocks. It feels like it's taking forever. Yeah. But what you're doing is you're doing the building blocks and then in a second, you can see we're almost at the finish line. We're gonna be just making tacos and eating them. And then we'll move to the ribs. Do, how much money do you make on a taco? Like, what's a taco cost you? And then what do you make on it? Pennies. What? We make pennies. Really? Yeah. If you're lucky in the restaurant business, you can make 10, 15% profit off what, whatever you're selling. But the lower the price of the item, the less the margin. So a taco, you can only sell for what? Like $2, you know, $1.50? <laughs> yeah. What's that? <laughs> That's the oven. Um, <laughs> do, you put so a race, do you put a racehorse in there? I know, it's so normal to me, but like, I love seeing the expression. Um, but you know, you're selling something for $2. Well, you know, it's like, by the time you make it, Marin, look how much work goes into it, right? Yeah, and then you gotta pay me. $2, you gotta, you gotta pay, pay them. You, you gotta pay everybody. What's the, what's so, the? Uh, you gotta pay rent, so by the time you're done, you got 15 cents. So if you're, if you know? what's the thing you wanna sell the most of? You wanna sell the most of like, I mean salads and and like uh, bread. Right, and, so you and love ba basic white start, bitches. Basic, basic, basic white, white bitches are. Lo I love y'all. Easy, love Victoria. By the way, hold on. Okay. Victoria just went like this. Excuse me. Excuse me. She stood up. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the trick to buffets. Buffets put all the starch first: the potatoes, rice, bread, all that stuff. That's all because it's just flour, water, and you know, no money. What's that? This is our vinaigrette. So we're gonna make the slaw for the, the tacos here. So you can you can put on this black glove, here's extra large, and go ahead and just mix that together. Yeah. Shit, I thought I would just be sitting down and talking shit while he cooks, but I got I, I saw him. <laughs> I got a little scared. So you know I have like a rubber glove phobia. Really? Yeah, but it doesn't look bad with this watch. All right. All right. Woo, this you're is good. creepy. You're doing good. You're doing, you're doing great, Bert. Okay, mix that together. Wow. All right. How's the meat? Doing good? All right. So, perfect. Great. Great job, you guys. Ooh. So we recooked the meat. What right. is it, good? So that's the kogi meat. Kogi oh, powder. Mm. Uh, Put meat on there just like that. It was hot, so. Yeah. And you got the slaw going. Yeah. I'll build one okay. for you, and then you can just follow. Okay. So, with the sauce, sauce, two sauces, onion mix, and then slaw. Yeah. Right on top. Well, did you already put the sauces on? Yeah. Okay. I just did one for you to show okay. you. And then okay. um, we'll take some limes and stuff, put it in there as garnish. But what I like to do also is just. Squeeze a lime over the Can't top. Can't take the chef out of the kitchen. Look at that. Oh, okay. So, sauce. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, Put it over yeah. the middle. Oh, sorry. 
like that. <laughs> and then do the same thing with the green. Yeah. And then the onion mix and then the slaw and a little bit of lime. And then... Onion mix. Onion There's mix. Onion mix uh, right there. Yep. Onion Put mix. that over the top. But this is a big deal because this is like my baby. This is the this is the Kogi Taco being this made like by my, Bert Kreischer. It's like my machine. I, I never my imagined machine. this. This is like in the history of Kogi that the only person outside of Kogi making the Kogi Taco would be Bert Kreischer. This is this is really what this is what set it off. This is this is the taco. This uh, is it. Yeah, this is the oh. and then slaw over the top. Okay. This needs and a then more. Um, and then squeeze lime over the top. Squeeze lime. Okay. What's the lime add? Uh, acidity, punch, balance, flavor. Those are fucking sexy. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and grab a, any taco you want, and then let's take a bite. Oh. I gotta take this thing off. I can't eat with rubber gloves. It freaks me out. I feel like a doctor's putting his fingers in my mouth. Yo. Oh, my God, it's Yo. pouring out. Look at this. That's fucking awesome, dude. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I can see why it became a hit. This is the one, man. Yeah. This is it. Wow. So imagine 2008, the first, there's nothing like this. Yeah. And this flavor just pops on the scene. That's what I'm saying. It's just, um, you know what this is like? Just like? It's almost like it came from outer space. I'll you tell know? you what this is like. This is like when you first heard Wu-Tang. Yes. And you're like, <laughs> the fuck is this? Is, is Method Man you know what I mean? Yeah, this is Wu-Tang. Yeah, Wu -Tang. you're RZA, dude. <laughs> I know he's more Method Man well, when I was you. like, does he have a breathing problem? When it's a great started. example. It's yeah. like. Because you've never heard it before, and then you hear it, and you're just like, whoa. Yeah. What is this? What is that? And then you're like, I fucking like it. My parents, they loved it. They were just like, make some kind of money <laughs> one day. Mm. Leanne Kreischer. Mm. Come in and oh. get, get a taco. Yeah. Leanne. Buddy, I tell you the best part of my life? Wow. No celebrity oh. shit, no money shit. For his daughter's birthday. He'd bring the taco truck out to cater his daughter's birthday parties. And you, I could eat all of it. Oh, that's He right. was paying for everything. I'd just eat nonstop. I wouldn't leave the taco <laughs> truck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, ribs. Ribs. I'm so right. good. Right? Mm -hmm. I right? made that. I'm it so just, good. And you saw how many steps go in there. But we don't try to overpower people with, like, what's inside. We just, like, eat it. But it's because of all those steps, the flavors, the layers. So good. Oh, dang it. And it was right there. Like, it was right there. You used to bring this home to the girls. I used remember? to bring it home, yeah. You did it for dinner. We'd, yeah, you'd show up at tacos, we'd be so happy. Tom, I like you cooking. You should have a cooking show. Yeah. <laughs> you want to just take something's burning for a while? Sure. <laughs> OK, perfect. And do played up the other one, too. Should we just two bears some all my projects? And uh, Bert? Yeah. Take the thinner ones and then garnish the top. Sure. Just. Let it fall. Let it let it rain. Fall naturally. There you go. That's good. And then take some sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. And then again, just let it fall naturally. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's professional restaurant plate up. Yeah. I just made My a mess God. in the kitchen. All right. Sure. You do the same thing. Sure. Let me um, give you room. Whoa. There you go. So and good, then right? Sesame seeds. Oh, yeah. Sesame seeds sell it. They really sell it. Can I tell you? They look like white guy ribs, and now they look like Asian guy ribs. <laughs> right? The sesame take. seeds are like, oh, yeah, that's going to be better. <laughs> that's all that's it takes. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, please. It's like all when right. you're watching the Olympics, you know? <laughs> and it's like, here's the American team, and then it's like, the Asian gymnast walks out, you're like, we're getting the gold, dude. <laughs> this is fucking, these guys are fucking real oh. deal. Fuck. All right, so these Man, are... Man, I love a rib. Mm. Mm. Fuck, look at that. Mm. Literally. Yeah. This one's a little bit of a different style. Try that. This one is oven baked. This is Try oven baked? One mm -hmm. And then that one's grilled. So good. Yeah. Liam. Yeah. Mm. Can I grab that? Oh, mm. yeah. Oh, my God. I'm going to try a... I want to try a grilled one. Here. Yeah, and you were responsible for cooking this the whole thing. This is thousand percent me. What am I going to do it's here? It's hundred percent you. Oh my god! It just fell off Ooh. the bone. Yeah, I'm shaking. It's good, right? It's like um, oh, it's fucking perfect. Sticky, little bit of a chew, crispy, but then like glazed. 
Um, oh my God, it literally fell off the bone. Yeah, yeah, and then the flavor goes all the way through the meat because we braised the rib before we Whoever we kept it. painting it with sauce did such a yeah, good job. And that's amazing. It's, it's really, so perfectly <laughs> sauced, Tom. God. Yes, good job. I can't imagine if you had not had Jonathan in here to go, no, more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have I would have actually been like, I think we did it. We're good. No. And that was the key, it's just all those layers. Oh my God. Yeah. Let's take everything over to the table. Um, Come on down. Show's not over yet. One in five Americans have learned a new language on their bucket list. If that's you, make 2024 the year you finally check it off the list with Babbel. Be a better you in 2024 with Babbel, the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. One of my favorite things in the world to do is travel with the girls, and our favorite thing to do as a family is to learn a new language. Tommy and I challenged each other on uh, in Italian. He picked it up so much faster because he can speak Spanish. It's so fun, and it really does keep your brain young. Here's a special limited-time deal for our listeners right now. Get 50% off a one-time payment for a lifetime Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash burning. Get 50% off at babbel.com slash burning, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash burning. Rules and restrictions may apply. Huh? Oh, that's a grill. Okay. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, we usually oven bacon. We might change them to the Tom Segura grill. <laughs> oh, we did this just for our show because our ribs usually just go in the oven. That's a, not exciting. The, the flavor is just right. The whole mm. and it softens the meat up. It more. softens it up differently. Mm. I noticed that the grilled ones all are falling off the bone. Oh, oh the grilled ones are really nice. I like that, man. I, that, I am. What is what is the sauce when you do these pickles? Uh -huh. Is there a peanut butter in there? No, it's uh, sesame oil. That's what you're getting, okay? Oh, sesame but These oil. are our pickles, this kimchi. How, how do you get your kimchi? You make it. That's, you make a, it? that's a kimchi room right there. No fucking way! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shut up! That's a kimchi fermentation room right there. By the way, remember I told you earlier my wife's obsession? Mm -hmm. So she started watching, I guess, TikTok videos mm -hmm. and is making kimchi at home. Oh, shit. Not in a fucking room. I'm not giving her that. <laughs> but she's doing like her own kimchi. For real? You're, you're going to have obsessed, to buy another dude. refrigerator soon. Really? Yeah, because that's how serious it gets with kimchi. She loves it, dude. It's, it's like every other day. How do we franchise you? <laughs> I've been trying to figure that out. Because I, I bet there's people that are like, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, because there were people, when you started Kogi, there was a guy that st opened one called Asian Pussy, right? <laughs> what? Kuji. Coochie. What? It's called oh, pussy. God. What? Um, There's a guy that copied him, but he spelt it wrong, and it said Asian <laughs> pussy. That would fucking sell. <laughs> that I would sign up for. By the way, I've never had, had, had it. I've heard good <laughs> things. I've heard it before. <laughs> you had it? It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go into a business, I'm all about that Asian <laughs> pussy. So Asian That's pussy. It. I bet that thing jumps off the shelf. By the way, it's popular all over the world. <laughs> Uh, the guy just misspelled it? <laughs> yeah, right? He misspelled it, yeah. He misspelled it. <laughs> Grants were lined up. <laughs> uh, this place is unbelievable. He figured it out. They go to, uh, go to Roy's truck and they go to his truck. Right. Can I tell you the, the taco truck I wanted to open? I think I pitched this to you. I wanted to do a, a taco truck called Sauces, where I just have every sauce that you could ever imagine, and I, pull up, and I pull up next to trucks and go, you guys need mayonnaise? <laughs> <laughs> huge margins, man. Huge, huge margins. Guys, we're out of ketchup. <laughs> I love sauce. Where are you locations-wise now? Like, how many? LA. LA is, mm -hmm. is trucks? Uh, uh... LA is trucks, and I have a bar called the Alibi Room oh, that we serve Kogi at. Uh, we it... partner with a... The bar owner, and we run the kitchen, he runs the bar. And you have this. Now I have two in Vegas, I have the trucks in LA, and a bar. Wait, awesome. where, where can I get that dish I had at Pot? Do you know the one I'm talking about? The crazy... The soup one? The fucking soup one. We have it here. We have Sundubu Jige here. If you're 
If you are coming to Vegas, yeah. this is where you have to stop to eat. This is the one stop, the Thank one you. must. You've got to get the tacos. You've got to get this soup is because we went to pot one time and you're yeah. like, and, and they're like, oh, uh, chef has everything coming out. But <laughs> this is what's special. What is that soup? It's a. Uh, um, that one was a chique. Chique is like a stew, a spicy stew with like, it could either have seafood, pork, beef, whatever you want, tofu, like a cauldron. It's yeah, like a, it's cauldron a cauldron of like, the most tasty, dankiest shit that you could ever have yeah. in the world. You know? I fucking love soups. Yeah. I really love soups. I love soups. soups, too. Georgia, right before she went back to college, she goes, I, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. I wouldn't mind a soup for breakfast. Mm. Man, I've never felt more abuse as a father. Yeah. I'm so glad I didn't drink on that flight, because I went out to Ralph's, uh -huh. bought a bunch of shit, and I stayed up all night smoking weed and making soup. Really? And I was so excited. And she came in the next morning, and she was like, yo, you got the soup? And I was like, yeah. And we made her soup, and then we can't mm -hmm. we boxed up a bunch of soup for her to take home and on a ride home was eating text me pictures of the soup yeah feeding your child yeah is the funnest mm -hmm. thing as a parent yeah. in my heaven when i go to heaven i, I will be making daughter d breakfast for my daughters and their friends that's my favorite thing i've ever done in my entire fucking life why you gotta wait till heaven do it here I do it here, but they're all gone. They're all in college now. Oh, yeah. And so yeah. I have to wait until like Christmas and they all come over and just like making badass sandwich, yeah. breakfast sandwiches, uh -huh. getting uh, up and setting up bacon in a, in a, in a uh, it's. The, I they, love cooking breakfast like when they have sleepovers. When they have sleepovers. Yeah. That, that when they compliment you, like Ellis, oh. every night, my eight year old, like he eats like a bird throughout the day. And then at night, he always wants a grilled cheese. Uh -huh. But I started to buy special breads, better cheese, mixed cheeses. Uh, throw in some meat in there, then I, you know, you start, you butter the bread, you start like, and then he's like, yo, he's like, your grilled cheese? Way better than mom's grilled cheese. And I'm like, that's what's up, dude. And don't ever forget it. And it's because I care more. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm a man. Yeah. And then we he's work like, better than they And then he'll, then he'll say, she'll like, hey, make dad's grilled cheese. And she's like, what's dad's? I'm like, you're not even capable of pulling this off. <laughs> like, I'll do this for him. But giving, giving, like, seeing your own kid just like smile with what uh -huh. you fed them oh, yeah. is the greatest feeling. It's the um, greatest. It's the best, yeah, yeah, definitely. I wish I'd had more kids. It's not too late, dude. It's not too late. I know. Well, with that one, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, most of those oil fields are dry. Just, uh, <laughs> just go on tour without her and make yeah, some kids. Yeah. 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 I wish you would let me get her a sister wife. Yeah, sure. Where I'll get her pregnant yeah. repeatedly. I want six more kids. Yeah. Leanne will raise them. I'll come back off the road on Tuesdays. Yeah. Say hi, make some grilled cheeses, a soup. Yeah. Bounce. Utah. Yeah. Utah, baby. Dude. Buddy, I wish I could just get my wife to understand the Book of Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I leave it around the house. I tell her how what a great man John Smith was. Dude, she could get it. You gotta immerse her in the culture. You gotta move to Utah for you gotta a move it. Yeah. 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 I broke all my rules for my diet today. I broke all my rules when I'm so on happy. The diet? It's it's it is on the diet. I always see you going through all these stages. No drinking, no carb. This, uh, what's the ultimate goal? Do you want to be skinny and unrelatable? Yeah, unrelatable. Yeah, yeah. I want Rich, people to go. Skinny and I want. Be like, I, I, I got it. <laughs> Joe Rogan had a heart. Came up to me. Do I tell yeah. you this? And he's like, "You're too jacked. You're too uh, jacked, man. You're too, your shoulders are heavy. your shoulders are are distracting." And I was like, "I did it. Yeah, I did good. it. If uh -huh. Joe Joe can't see me with my shirt off and not think I look hot, I did it." <laughs> <laughs> he said it to Leanne. He's like, he, he's ripped. He's fucking ripped. You gotta put a shirt on. And I was like, I did think that for a, a second too. Late, your latest pictures where you have a flat stomach. Yeah. Like, oh. Hey, here's the thing. I, I gotta like, be honest with you. I got a little I, hard. I got a little, a little hard. <laughs> I got a little hard. I did. I swear. I, I was like, no. Oh. Here's the thing: is like, I, I there was a period of time where I just I don't think I inspired uh -huh. people to like life. Yeah. Like I was just looked sad. Yeah. I just want to look happy. And so whatever happy looks like, I yeah. want it to, I want people to go, oh, he's doing good. Uh, yeah. Like I think there was a period where Tom had said to me maybe 12 times, I'm worried about you. Yeah. And I and I didn't know that that's what people saw. Like I, I thought I was doing fine because I was working and I was making money. Yeah. And everyone was like, I'm worried about everyone. Bobby Kelly was worried about me and he got uh -huh. lap band surgery. So like so like I just now <laughs> yeah, I just but go. You, you yeah, took yeah. the reins though, dude. I and took you did the reins. It, you did it yourself. Great. You didn't ask. It wasn't because of anybody. You just decided. I'm gonna be healthier. You yeah. know, took control of your own shit. That takes a lot because you were building your brand based on chugging a 
downing a whole fifth of whatever, and then like, wow, taking your shirt yeah. off. And As you hold. As you hold. You know, I've, I've grown. I've grown a lot, Roy. <laughs> yeah, you've grown. I've grown a lot. lot. <laughs> Something's burning. Love you to death, brother. Thank you so much. This episode was brought to you by The Machine.